Anin Vayan Adishnikaz, Jijak Nidodam, Kitaganzi B. Donjiba. I am honored to be here today and to say my speech on the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls of Canada. If I went missing, would you look for me? Would you see my face all over the news? Would you care? Would you demand to know what happened to that girl? Have they found her? You might be wondering, why is this girl so worried about disappearing? It's because statistics show I need to be. I am five times more likely to go missing than other women and girls. I am 13 years old. I am indigenous. I chose this topic because I hope by hearing me today, it might help spread awareness to this horrible fact happening in our country. It has been called the hidden human rights crisis, a national tragedy. The missing and murdered indigenous women and girls of Canada. The issue of these missing women in Canada is as old as Canada itself. Indigenous women and communities have long called out for help to the high rates and appalling numbers, but their calls were ignored by the federal government. Finally, in 2016, the government launched a national inquiry for these women, but most families are still waiting for answers on the countless unsolved cases. 1,200 is the documented number of missing and murdered Indigenous women in the last 30 years. But experts say the numbers are much greater. These women are someone's mother, someone's daughter. These women are someone. Many of these women were completing their education. Women like Loretta Saunders, an Enoch woman who was murdered at the age of 26. Loretta was completing her honors thesis on this very subject when she herself went missing in 2014. Maisie Ojik and Shannon Alexander were 16 and 17 years old and were last seen September 8th, 2008 at a school dance. Police called them runaways, but Maisie's mother said she would have called after seeing her family crying and looking for her. Tina Fontaine was 15 years old. Her body was pulled from the Red River in Winnipeg where many other women were found. It was Tina Fontaine's case that made an impact and people have begun to realize the truth of this hidden crisis and open their eyes. There are groups and organizations rising up to make a difference and find out why so many indigenous women are victims of violence when they only make up 4% total number of women in Canada. Every year, we gather outside the courthouse to drum and sing and send prayers to heal the families who are suffering. Everyone is welcome to join and stand up for these women. But once a year is not enough. Dangerous stereotypes have allowed people to make excuses and not look or help these women and families properly. It is time to stand up and to stop this, to bring our voices together and not let this continue in our country. How do you stop a bully? You stand together and say, no, this is not okay. I believe we all have a place in the medicine wheel. We can all make a difference. There's a message being shared across social media. The author is unknown. I am a strong Anishinaabe woman. I am content. If there ever comes a time where I go for groceries and don't return, I go to school or a friend's house and don't come home. No, I did not voluntarily leave my family. I am not out 
partying. If there ever comes a time where I don't return, no, someone took me against my will. Don't make excuses as to why I might not have returned. Look for me, please. These women did not get the media coverage they deserved. They did not ask it to be taken. We need to stop victim blaming and stand together. We need to do something because no one asks to disappear. Definitely a powerful young woman whose voice is going to be heard for a very long time with that message. Thank you.